we really combine uh, two things at TI. Um, we're present on the ground. Uh, we have uh, chapters uh, in 107 countries around the world um, that know the situation on the ground. Uh, but then we combine that with an international e expertise. Um, we have an international headquarter in Berlin. Uh, we have an EU office here in Brussels. And that, that sort of provides the, the, the international research and, and expertise uh, that we then exchange uh, with, the, with the best practice we, we see on the ground. So Transparency uh, International has been working on an EU money laundering directive for, for a number of years and just earlier this year it, uh, it finally passed uh, the, the European Parliament. What we've been asking for is that there be registers of beneficial ownership. So that, that's basically registers of who owns what so that you can see for, for any company, for any real estate, you can track down who ultimately behind a shell company or or a, a complicated legal structure, who, who owns it. And that basically reveals um, when, when people that, that have stolen assets, uh, corrupt dictators or, or corrupt officials from around the world that, that steal money from their populations, um, then they bring it out of the country, they hide it in these complicated legal structures and often use it to buy property in London or Paris or to uh, live on the French Riviera. And basically these, these registers uh, will, will allow in the future to, to track down those people and to identify where, where stolen assets are, are hidden in the EU. So in that sense it's a, it's a fantastic progress uh, that we will get these registers now. And, and the question is still, I mean, the, the money laundering directive has now gone into the well, as they're called, trilogue negotiations with the uh, with the governments in the in the council, um, and and we hope that uh, well that the governments uh, join in this fight and and really bring about more transparency when when it, when it comes to these stolen assets. So integrity pacts uh, are uh, around the structural funds that the that the EU has in, in many of the EU member states. So it's basically money for the poorer regions uh, around Europe. And oftentimes uh, this money goes into infrastructure projects or, or just to finance all kinds of projects uh, on the ground. Unfortunately, in many of those projects, uh, we have seen in the past that there is risks for, for corruption. And one of the ideas that we have to, to fight that kind of corruption is to, to have these integrity pacts, which basically brings in civil society into these projects. So let, let's Let's take an example if the EU would finance a, a stretch of road uh, somewhere in, in Romania. From the outset we would bring in a, a local anti-corruption organization that would basically follow the project and ensure that, that none of the funds uh, that, that go into that infrastructure project uh, get lost uh, uh, along the way and ensures that, that everything is clean. So of course this is a pilot project now. Uh, it's going to be in 13 uh, member states, but can uh, hopefully in the in the future be be extended uh, to to all uh, regional funds uh, of the EU. But it could also go beyond that. Uh, I, I think these kind of structures uh, bringing in other actors to to check uh, that that corruption is is kept at bay uh, is definitely something that the EU could could later apply for for development aid in in general around the world and and make sure that uh, as little of the money that, that we spend uh, to in, in development projects uh, everywhere in the world doesn't get lost. Um, in, in that sense, uh, it's, it's a bit of a circle that, that comes around because Transparency International was initially founded uh, to combat corruption in, in development aid because people that were working at the, at the World Bank about 22 years ago really saw that so much of the money that, that Western countries were, were giving for for development projects in the third world basically got lost somewhere and ended up uh, financing corrupt elites uh, in, in those countries that, that basically took all that money and, and got a nice life somewhere on a, on a beach or on a, on a yacht. And, and I think that that is a, a problem that continues to this day and that TI continues to, to fight uh, around the world.